Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw a highland cow in graphite. Now this is going to focus on a few top tips for drawing longer overlapping fur because I think that's one of the more challenging textures to get right. But first, before I could start the hair, I had to draw the horns. Now the reason being, there is a lot of the longer hair that's actually in front of the horn and I always recommend that when you've got anything that's overlapping, that you draw what is behind it first. That's the best way of achieving more depth in the drawing. Now my main consideration here was I wanted to focus on the contrast as always. I speak about that on all tutorials. So the contrast is you want your shadows dark and your highlights bright. But I also wanted to make sure that I got the texture right. This had to look like that smoother antler or horn texture, but I still also had to get those very small ridges, scratches in there as well. So I used a combination of my pencils working from light to dark initially because I did want to capture the bright highlight on the top of the horn as well. So when it came to drawing the hair, I was really aware that I had to make sure that I got my pencil strokes the correct length in order to replicate this hair texture. Now you can see here as well that they're curving in different directions. I want to make sure that I've captured that in order to get the flow and natural appearance of this hair texture. Now even though I've only completed a small section of this hair so far, you can really see how important it is to apply my layers. Now this is something that I talk about in all tutorials and it's just as important as the contrast. Especially if we're working on hair or fur texture like this that's particularly long. If I only work with two or three layers, I'm going to end up with a portrait that's far flatter and two dimensional. In order to get this thicker fur appearance, I have to make sure that I'm building up the depth there and I'm going to have to do that just by making sure I build up my layers. So this important layering process is something that I spoke a lot about in the real time version on Patreon. So with this, it's all in real time, there is no parts sped up, there's no sections cut out and I have also included the reference photo liner and full material list so that any Patreon members who do want to follow along have everything there to do so. So if this in-depth tutorial or any of my others on Patreon are of interest, I will link that in the description below. Another important aspect when working on a hair or fur texture like this is the importance of breaking up that reference photo in a more manageable way so everything is a little bit more easier to approach. This can definitely be one of those situations where we look at that reference photo and think where do I start? Now when we feel like that we can often hesitate quite a lot and spend more time staring at our artwork than actually drawing. I think that's totally normal especially when we're working on something that we're a little bit unsure of. But I do show in the real time version how you can break that up and almost make it far easier to approach in your mind because quite often the reason that we're feeling overwhelmed is because we're putting immediate pressure on ourselves to get that drawing looking accurate like that reference photo too early on. When I'm blocking in my main shapes here, this does not look realistic at all. I'm just basically mapping in the fundamentals of that reference photo and that gives me something to build on. If I worked with my first and second layer and expected it to look like that reference photo, it's not going to end up that way, it just doesn't work like that. I have to put in the layers and I have to work with what's closest to the skin and build up from there. One thing I also realised with this is with this much hair that is overlapping in so many different sections, this became easier for me to realise that actually yes, it does look like that reference photo once I'd had more of that hair drawn in. When I was working on just the ear, it was hard for me to visualise just how realistic my finished drawing was going to look. This is definitely one of those situations where I recommend trust the process, follow the layering order and the technique here, and then just work with that and carry on until you can look more at the larger area. Then I feel with this it's easier to make adjustments and tweak things where needed. Sometimes if we're too fixated on small sections here, we can have a tendency to overwork that area. Now although I do work in small sections here, I am still breaking this up into manageable parts. You'll notice that I do have to start working on larger sections just because this hair is so long. There are many different strands and clumps of hair that are overlapping other sections, so this forced me to actually work on a little bit more of a larger area than I typically would. 
And the reason for that is I can't work on a section of hair that has something that's overlapping or sitting on top. So that forced me to always work on the next section and then go back to the previous section so I could finish that off. And I talk about this in all of my tutorials, how it's important to focus on the layers. What do you notice that's behind or maybe sitting on top or beneath? This here and breaking up the reference photo in that way really does simplify the drawing process, which is really beneficial when we're working on something that's as complex as this. So before I move on to the nose and the body, if this video has been useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like, a thumbs up, because it makes a huge difference to my channel. And I do upload two to three videos to YouTube every week. So if you'd like to get notified of all that content, then hit the subscribe and the bell button. So with any animal that I'm drawing, I will always map in the nostrils and the lower part of the mouth first. This ensures that I've got the shape of the nose and the mouth accurate, my angles, proportions and perspective are correct before I focus on any kind of detail. When I'm happy with that, that's when I can start working on the texture. Now the pattern on the nose here was very different to most animals, so I wanted to make sure that I got that right. Now although the dark creases and ridges with the nose are very dark, I did start off with a lighter pencil, just something like a HB with very minimal pressure so that I could map in the pattern first and then I went in with my darker, softer pencils to reinforce that contrast. I would recommend to do this when those areas where they might be a little bit challenging so that you know if you do accidentally make a mistake, you're going to be able to far easier remove that graphite from the paper and potentially start again with that section. If you work with these techniques, there's really nothing that you can't fix. And that's why I do like working with building up the layers in this way. Now, when I was working on the fur or hair around the nose, I had to make sure that the texture of this was very different to the rest of the face. You can see I've got a big variation between the length of my pencil strokes. And this is something that I cover in depth in every single one of my Patreon tutorials. The pencil technique, how we're holding that pencil, the way that we're using it, are going to massively affect the sort of pencil stroke that's created. Now the three things that we want to be focusing on is fur direction, fur length and fur thickness. The hair direction is not random, so even when you've got an animal where they've got longer hair like this, it still will follow the underlying bone and muscular structure. Although the mid to end of that hair strand or the clump of hair is going to have more freedom of movement, the base and where that hair stems from does have to be following that bone structure. So I always want to be making sure that I'm paying very close attention to where that starts and where it finishes. And the reason why the end of those pencil strokes are so important is because they will be overlapping the next section of hair. So when you're working with something like this, each clump of hair is never random. It will always be following that bone and muscular structure. Now that being said, with an animal like this, with this length of hair, if they were to shake their head, we've got to remember that this fur would be sitting slightly differently, but you'd still have the shape, the curves. You'd have a rough idea just purely by where the lights and darks are sitting, where the eyes would be, where the ears join onto the side of the head and so on. So it's really important to make sure that we don't put a huge amount of stress on ourselves that every single pencil stroke has to be in exactly the right place because I personally don't feel that that's as important as things like layers and contrast because as I've said, one shake of this animal's head or if it was looking in a slightly different direction, this hair would look different. And one thing that you'll find is if you just focus on your contrast where your lights and your darks should be, the rest of that that I've just spoken about will come more naturally because we're not thinking about that and putting pressure on ourselves. So if you are wanting to go for a photo realistic portrait as I have here, close is good enough, but always with the intention of getting it as accurate to that reference photo as we possibly can. What's important is you do want to make sure that the nose, the eyes, the ears, the main features of that animal are in the right place. Because obviously if that is wrong, you're going to have a real issue with your proportions and your perspective from the beginning. So starting off with a good, accurate sketch is always worthwhile. So I really do hope the tips and techniques that I've shared in this video have been useful. As I've mentioned earlier, if you would like to see the entire real-time tutorial from start to finish, no sections cut out or sped up, then this is available on Patreon now. 
I do also have a Patreon library on my website which lists all of the tutorials available on Patreon so you get an idea of the sort of content that's there before you sign up. Now the wonderful thing with Patreon is it's really flexible so you can stay for as long as you like or you can cancel at any time. If you've got any art related questions feel free to pop them in the comments below, I'm more than happy to help if I can and I'm going to be uploading another video here to YouTube next week. As always thank you so much for watching.